Hola a todos ustedes, mis amigos, los estudiantes. Um, esta semana vamos a mirar qué me gusta y qué no me gusta, expressing likes and dislikes. And uh, in this lesson, in order to talk about this and use this structure, we want to learn some nouns, uh, things that we can like or not like and some activities for the same purpose. We use the expression me gusta uh, to express the idea of liking something, a thing, um, using words that you already know from the lesson on clothing. We could say, for example, me gusta la ropa, me gusta el sombrero, me gusta la falda. We talked about how Spanish doesn't use a don't helping word that could do in English. It just puts no in front of the, um, the verb when we're um, expressing the idea of not liking something in this case. So the verb here is gusta. Um, so we say no me gusta la ropa. I don't like clothing. No me gusta el sombrero. No me gusta la falda. In the event that the thing that you like or don't like is plural, as in the examples below, we change from gusta to gustan. So it's the same structure, but we just add an N. We're changing the form of the verb. No me gustan los guantes. No me gustan los zapatos. No me gustan las camisetas. And we need to point out that uh, while we say I like, Spanish does this, conveys this idea uh, in a different way. We could even call it backwards. It's more accurate to translate the structure in Spanish and the meaning to such and such a thing, a person, an activity is pleasing to me or gives me pleasure, gives me pleasure. So looking at the situation here, it would be like saying in me gustan los guantes, the gloves are pleasing to me. In order to practice this structure, me gusta, and then I also showed you me encanta, which is I love, um, we need some nouns. So I'm going to give you 10 common nouns, things, aside from what we already know as clothing articles. And then I will give you 10 uh, verbs, which represent activities that you may like or not like and express those. So we want to use these words, this new vocabulary. You learn the new vocabulary, but you plug it into this structure that I'm showing you. Either me gusta, no me gusta, me encanta, and you'll see that as we practice that. There are a few different words for one of these, but we will start with one. La pluma. La pluma. La pluma. El libro. El libro. La película. La película. La película. La música, la música, la música. La ciudad, la ciudad, la ciudad. Notice the pronunciation of the D's as soft THs. Um, also notice that uh, a general rule Words that end D-A-D are 
feminine. Um, and you'll see the other words we've seen here that end in O or A ah are pretty much obeying the rule of masculine and feminine. And then also remember our pronunciation rules as you're learning, going through the process of learning new vocabulary. The rules will not change with regard to pronunciation, so you want to apply them even though the words are new. El campo. El campo. El campo. Las galletas. Las galletas. Las galletas. In this case, las galletas are obviously cookies, but if they are salty, Spanish uses the same word for crackers. So las galletas are either cookies or crackers, and you would know from the context. El café. El café. El café. El té. El té. El té. La fruta. La fruta. La fruta. Here is our first action, and we pointed out today in class that all infinitives of verbs, that is, verbs that are not conjugated, what does that mean? Verbs that do not have someone actually already doing those things, like in this case, dormir is to sleep, to sleep. We say to sleep indicate to Sleep means the infinitive of the verb. Nobody is sleeping. Johnny, I, we, nobody's doing that activity yet, so we say to sleep. Spanish, rather than adding a word to indicate this, infinitive, they uh, end the word in R. So remember, every time you see a verb that ends in R, that's every verb that is in its infinitive form. We will be demonstrating this in our next lesson. Dormir. 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 Caminar. 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 Nadar. Nadar, nadar, escuchar la música, escuchar la música, escuchar la música, cantar, cantar, cantar. Comer, comer, comer. Hablar, hablar, hablar. Usar mi teléfono, usar mi teléfono. Usar mi teléfono. A couple variations on this theme would be usar el teléfono, usar el teléfono. Mi is indicating possession. Mi means my here. Usar mi teléfono versus just usar el teléfono. Um, you could also say hablar por teléfono to speak on the phone. Hablar Hablar, pardon. Hablar por teléfono. Viajar. 
viajar, viajar, mirar la tele, mirar la tele, mirar la tele. The key question, la pregunta clave here, an information question using the question word, la palabra interrogativa, que, as in, uh, que te gusta, or que te gusta hacer, que te gusta, what do you like, versus que te gusta hacer, hacer is to do, or to make, que te gusta hacer, and then the response will be, 
uh, giving information because this is an information question. So me gusta, and then one of those nouns, or me gustan if it's plural. Uh, and then for verbs, you will always say me gusta, and we will give you some examples. ¿Qué te gusta? Me gustan los libros. Me gustan los libros. ¿Qué te gusta comer? And here you can either say, me gusta comer las galletas, or you could just uh, drop the comer because it's understood from being in the question, and just say, me gustan las galletas. And we have to say, gustan because las galletas are plural as we did with me gustan los libros. If this were a singular noun, we would say, remember, me gusta. Here, for example, we're seeing the use of a singular noun, and you'll see. Que te gusta? Me gusta la música. Me gusta la música. Then we're going to add an element here of negativity, of what you don't like. Pero, and we said pero is but, B-U-T, um, but, however, pero no me gusta cantar. ¿Qué te gusta? Me gusta la música, pero no me gusta cantar. ¿Qué te gusta hacer? Me gusta nadar. However, pero no me gusta caminar. Me gusta nadar, pero... No me gusta caminar. ¿Qué te gusta mirar? To watch. Mirar is to look at, to watch. ¿Qué te gusta mirar? Me gusta mirar la tele. Pero no me gusta mirar las películas. Me gusta mirar la tele, pero no me gusta mirar las películas. Expressing a like, and then something that's related, but that you don't like, to clarify. Me gustan los libros, pero no me gustan las películas. Me gustan los libros, pero no me gustan las películas. If there is a question, but it does not have one of our palabras interrogativas that we've learned, que, donde, cuando, quien, por qué, etc., then it is a yes-no question. As in, ¿te gusta mirar películas? And you would respond either sí or no. Sí, me gusta mucho, a lot. You could say, sí, me encanta, I love it, or love them, but I love the action, so it's going to be singular, me gusta. Or, no, no me gustan las películas. No me gustan las películas, and because it's plural. Or we could have said, no, no me gusta mirar películas. In which case I would have said gusta because the verb mirar is followed. More yes, no questions because... We don't have a question word. There is no K here. I'm not asking you to give me information. Although, as we said, typically when we ask even a yes, no question, most humans don't leave it at yes or no. They clarify, they expand, they amplify their answer, as we are doing here. ¿Te gusta nadar? Sí. Me gusta mucho. Or me encanta. Or no, no me gusta nadar. Pero me gusta caminar. So, not this, but this. No, no me gusta nadar, pero me gusta caminar. ¿Te gusta cantar? Sí, me gusta cantar. Or, no, no me gusta cantar, pero me gusta escuchar la música. This following note can be a little bit confusing. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, sometimes in order to clarify or emphasize exactly um, whom we're speaking about, 
you add a small expression. It's actually redundant because it's saying the same thing. So Spanish does this to emphasize or clarify. It says the same thing twice. It's called a redundant construction. So if you're referring to yourself, something in this structure of what you like, you often see a mi me gusta whatever, as in a mi me gusta cantar, or a mi me gustan las galletas. If you're talking about some the, per, the second person that you're talking to, to clarify or to emphasize, you would say, a ti te gusta caminar. A ti te gusta caminar. That is emphasizing the fact that it is you who is liking something, as in a mi emphasizes the fact that it is I who am liking, who is liking whatever we're talking about.